that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our masticulations! The Mashiculations shirt. Available through Teespring, link in the description. Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the castle from the Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. Oh, sorry. I always think of Snap Jelly when Prince Caspian comes up. It must be that beautiful hair of his. No, 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 no. This Prince Caspian, who has hair equally as beautiful. Specifically, I'll be reviewing how good of a castle it really is, comparing it to proper, real, historical castles that existed in the medieval period, and also just analysing it according to effective, defensible castle design. And gee, this one is gonna be a lot of fun, because really, when I think about all the great fantasy castles, the Prince Caspian Castle actually is one of my favourite, but that doesn't mean it is perfect. In fact, it's such a good example of a castle to analyse, because they have done so much right in it, yet there is also a lot of problems. And it's castle designs like this that create the most discussion in our analysis. So we shall begin where I always begin in any castle review that I have done, and that is location. And guys, have a look at the location of this castle. Oh, you cannot get a better location. This is just beautiful. Remember the principles. The first option that you want to go for is elevation. You've put a castle up high and makes it very difficult for people to be able to employ siege weapons against you. This nullifies siege towers, trebuchets, catapults. It makes it very difficult, if not impossible, for you know attackers to do ladder rushes. And they force the enemy to approach the castle in only one direction because every other approach is completely untenable, unfeasible. But there is something uniquely interesting about the Prince Caspian uh, castle location compared to other castle locations that we have looked at that have had really good high elevation. One of the uh, fantasy castles that comes to mind is the castle from Dragon Age Inquisition, Skyhold put up really high this incredible position, but the difference between Skyhold and the Caspian Castle is the Caspian Castle actually isn't necessarily on a higher elevation than the access point or the nearby village. It's on a rock outcrop that sits further away from an edge of a cliff. This actually creates a huge amount of convenience and makes it a far more practical and usable castle. Now, in terms of defense, like a castle up high, awesome. You would want to go for it and you would just deal with the impracticality of it being so high up. Classic example, a historical example that comes to my mind, and I referenced these castles in my previous castle review when I looked at Marketh from Skyrim, but specifically I want to focus in on one of those castles. So I was referring to the Five Sons of Carcassonne, or they're also called Carther Castles. Well have a look at this specific one, and <laughs> yeah, alright, let's go with this pronunciation. Horlerons? Polaron I'm just gonna call it Polarons, right? Look at its location. This is incredible. But climbing up to the castle would be the biggest turd. Certainly acceptable to get such an impregnable position. This castle is just amazing. But gee, getting in and out of that castle just for whatever daily duties, traveling to and from, oh, look at the stairwell access way. You literally have to climb a cliff to get to it. The Prince Caspian Castle, on the other hand, has as much of a defensive advantage without the inconvenience. It just has this beautiful straight bridge that runs right to the castle and it establishes the only approach if you want to assault this castle the only way you can get to it is from along this bridge no other access way at all and realistically there would be a postern somewhere it isn't referenced in the film but castles had posterns so we can assume, hopefully, I might have it there. So yes, all the advantages of having an incredibly high, unassailable, elevated position, and none of the disadvantages of the people who live in the castle getting to and from it. So location, 10 out of 10. Perfect. Could not be better, in my opinion. 
Now let's look at some of the layout of this castle, and it's a bit hard because we're limited to the only the angles that the movie shows us, which is why reviewing uh, castles from video games works out so much better. But we can get a decent enough idea from uh, these shots. And look at what we see here. I see one gatehouse. I see a second gatehouse. Uh, uh, what, is this a third gatehouse? Do we have three gatehouses on the approach to this castle? Oh my goodness! It's like they actually thought about layers of defense! And then on the approach to this castle, you have this big, long, beautiful bridge that will funnel the enemy into a massive bottleneck if they try and assault it. But after the first kind of gatehouse-ish part, there's a drawbridge! Yes! Oh, gee! If you remember my review of Skingrad, there was another castle with kind of a similar approach, a bridge going to it, but there was no drawbridge on it. In fact, I've even seen this kind of on Historical Castle, though it's hard to confirm because the castle was destroyed and I, so I'm not sure if it had a drawbridge originally, but from what remains, it doesn't look like there has a drawbridge. And this is on one of my favourite castles, I've mentioned it before, Corf Castle. Big, beautiful bridge running to the mound or elevated position that the castle is on. And in real, I should have mentioned Corf Castle because this is actually a, a very good historical comparison to a similar kind of location. But there's still a slight climb after you get through the uh, outer baileys to the main keep, but still massive benefits from its elevation and uh, not nearly as many inconveniences with its access. But when looking at the bridge, I have not been able to find a drawbridge. So this might be one example where a fantasy castle has taken a historical principle or design or location and executed, uh, executed it a little bit better than the actual real life comparison. This is amazing! And the drawbridge actually plays a very pivotal role when the heroes actually try and assault this castle. They've got to lower the drawbridge. And we'll get to how they uh, approach the assault of the castle because, of course, uh, the heroes, they're forced to think a little bit outside of the box because you just, you can't do a standard assault to this castle. Now, realistically, if the Caspian castle existed in real life, your only option, if you wanted to take the castle, because... Uh, assaulting it is like a hundred different types of suicide. You would have to be insane to try and take this castle by force. The real, the only best option you have would be to starve it out. A, a long-term siege. And remember, many people who took castles in the past, that is exactly how they did it. Of course, in the movie, they are able to employ a tactic that it would be impossible in a true medieval setting, and that's flight. They actually, you know, use griffins and fly the heroes in over the walls where they sneak in and try and lower... Uh, the drawbridge and raise the portcullis. Because that is really the only other option when trying to assault a castle with such amazing defense. And that's the, uh, you know, Trojan horse, sneak someone in kind of thing to open the gates from the inside. And if you can just sneak your, you know, army right in through the front gates without any massive battle on the battlements to get through the walls, well, you've avoided the biggest issues in taking the castle. Unfortunately, we can't give the heroes full credit for their inventive way of trying to circumvent or bypass the castle defences because as good as the Prince Caspian castle has appeared to be so far, it's actually missing some very crucial elements that if they were there, I don't think the heroes would have been able to actually break in. First issue, the outermost gatehouse, okay, isn't really fortified. The only thing on it that we see in the movies is it has a, a very flimsy metal grate. Flimsy enough that a minotaur was able to just bust through it with his head, when in reality his horns actually would have been caught in between the bars, <laughs> because the horns would have gone through the bars before the actual impact from his skull hit the metal, and then as the doors tried to swing shut, the side bars would have been caught on the horns that were protruding through them. Physics, people! I mean, ugh, can't you just think about these things? And from this shot, we actually get to see the outermost gatehouse, and uh, you can see it would it'd be a bit hard-pressed to raise a portcullis into it, which is perhaps why they didn't put a portcullis in, in on this outer part. 
But that's a flaw in design. If they were thinking about this properly, and this was a, you know, a castle that wanted to uh, complete its design in the most practical and effective way, this outer gatehouse would have a portcullis on it, and there would be a second drawbridge on it as well. And it would be built large enough to have the portcullis being raised into. If these heroes had to deal with a second drawbridge and a second portcullis, I'm not sure they would have been able to raise them. And if the guards were, you know, not absolute morons that are so easily to, like, look, slight tap on the back of the head, they get knocked out. These guards are like lemmings, one flick and they die. But if they had proper guards and, uh, you know, there were actual guards on the outermost gatehouse, I think they would have noticed the portcullis being raised and the drawbridge being lowered, and they, uh, you know, would have made sure that no one would have snuck in and been able to do the same thing to their gatehouse. And of course, having a proper gatehouse means that Minotaur wouldn't have been able to bust through with his charge. And if you're interested in my own personal analysis of Minotaurs in combat and the usefulness of charges, I've actually made two whole videos on the best medieval weapons for minotaurs uh so yeah go check them out if you're interested the next thing it does not seem like any of these gatehouses have secondary port colors an entry port colors and an exit port colors with no kind of kill zone in between where you could employ arrow loops on the sides or murder holes up above so as great as the caspian castle is we have already run into in my mind a fairly significant uh problem in its design well it's funny what the castle has actually is very adequate okay it's just the fact that they have a third outermost gatehouse not really fulfilling the function of what a gatehouse is supposed to do it just has this flimsy metal grate on it it's like why else is it there you know so if you're gonna put a gatehouse put a proper gatehouse on it. That's what I'm, so that's the big flaw. So now we come to the main part of the assault in the movie, which is uh, mostly conducted within the primary bailey of the castle. You see, when assaulting the castle, the main parts that you want to get your soldiers onto is not actually the bailey. The baileys are always made or uh, to uh, be somewhat kill zones, not always, but it's an area where you have walls surrounding you on every single side with potentially soldiers and archers which you do kind of see in the movie. So instead of getting your soldiers into the bailey, you actually want to get your soldiers on the ramparts and battlements. That's the parts of the castle you want to take. But I mean, yeah, take what you can. If you can't get the walls, okay, uh, taking the bailey, that's at least uh, one step forward in taking the castle. But what's interesting about this situation in the assault of the Caspian castle is that uh, the heroes take the bailey and there are walkways surrounding this bailey on all sides. In fact, in some instances, there are, there's more than one walkway. They kind of lay it up, which really would have been the best option for the defenders here. Instead of sending down men to do it into a big melee uh, in the bailey, just use your archers. Don't send your men down. Archers, it's a kill zone. Just destroy everyone because it doesn't seem like the attackers here have any archers to try and fire back. So it would have been, they would have been wiped out. End of the fight right here. And of course, Ultimately, they are pressed into a retreat, but the captain is actually reluctant to fire down on the people in the bailey because his men are there fighting the other people. Give the order. My men are still down there. So, of course, you know, it would have been better to not have sent your men down there in the first place. But because the bailey does ultimately function as a kill zone, just not a perfectly effective kill zone, in my opinion, because there just seems to be way too much easy access to these internal ramparts and walkways that surround it. The people attacking the castles are getting there far too easily and they end up fighting on the walkways. So yes, this part could have been done better. Now let's look at some of the design elements of uh, the crenellations, the towers, uh, and the, the layout doesn't really need to be spoken too much because it's just that it, it's, it's got towers, it's got a keep, and yes, in reality, the towers facing the sides and backs of the castle aren't really serving much of a functional purpose because, honestly, who can assault the castle from that direction? So there's not really much need to have them there, but it looks cool and maybe, you know, they, they actually built them to have the rooms of these towers and then they just put the battlements on top for the sake of having the battlements there. Now, what I like about the apparent design of, say, the crenellations is that... Uh, they look very, very authentic. Like, I actually think some of the turret designs, I can recognize these turret designs from historical castles, but unfortunately the one I'm thinking of, I can't remember the specific one. Maybe I can find it if I scour through my references. 
but this has been taken from a historical source, which means they have been looking to uh, uh, historical castles for inspiration in their design, which I love. We can see here that the size of the crenellations, specifically the merlons, are almost there. See, they're, they're coming up to the shoulder here, which honestly is good enough because on the angle, the att attackers, right, have to shoot up uh, to any of the defenders. And by virtue of that angle, they wouldn't actually be able to hit anyone standing behind this Merlon. And oddly, they have a kind of step up in front of the Merlon. And I can make a concession here. I can say, look, look all right, if you have so many defenders that there's uh, uh, not enough crenels for the defenders to fire in between, there might be some circumstances where you'd want the defenders uh, who do not have access to the crenels to actually step over and shoot over the Merlon. And so in that sense, I could see some functional reason for there to be a step there. And the step does not seem to be too big in that anyone standing behind it would have to be on the step to get the cover. They can just step a little bit behind it because the step doesn't to be big and still receive full cover uh, from anyone attacking. So I give a thumbs up to the design of these crenellations, but this design is not the same on all the crenellations on the castle. In fact, when we look at some of the, uh, uh, the top of other towers, uh, the crenellations are half as big, like, in terms of height. This is bizarre. Why on earth did they do that? Maybe, I don't know, because they don't actually have any shots in the movie of people standing there, but we can see them, all right? And so there are crenellations on other parts of the towers of this castle that are not big enough, and that is not good enough. And I've said enough on the crenellations, because I just want to say enough again. I can be a bit of a nuffy. <laughs> What we also see, and this is where we come to a massive fail in this castle. So they did so much right, yet there's a big issue here. And uh, uh, like the problem that I see here, I think you, if you're familiar with my content, you'll know this is the one that gets my goat. We see corbelling. So the top of these towers, their battlement has been extended off the rampart a little bit. Which, if you know, this is to provide provision for... Mesheculations! I did that for you headphone users there. So, the mesheculations. There is complete provision for them, but there's actually no mesheculations, okay? We can see from the upwards angles from this shot here, there is no hole or area to be able to fight through down from behind the battlements. Which means the mesheculations are completely aesthetic. They're fake. They're not real. There's no real proper mesheculation on this castle. My goodness, would they be useful on the three gatehouses that they have on this castle? Having some, you know, battlements, crenellations above the gates and with mesheculations there as well, that can kind of give you some murder hole functionality because it doesn't seem to be murder holes in the gatehouses themselves so while they're trying to break down the gates you can shoot through the mission to be perfectly safe but they're not there they don't have them ah oh, such a disappointment so it's hard for me to speak on the other elements of the castle because we're just not given enough detail i mean we are shown some shots of certain windows and it does look like the windows are built into alcoves which would say the walls of this castle are properly thick but having said that the the main parts of the walls that you would need to fortify are uh, the parts of the walls that are facing the bridge and the main access point because good luck reaching any of the walls with tributaries or anything from any other angle. It's also clear that they've incorporated a certain gothic kind of design elements, especially in the windows. There are gothic cathedral kind of windows, which are perfectly fine, especially for a fantasy castle. They look great. They could be made with the technology. And it's not a detrimental feature in its defenses because these windows are clearly positioned uh, on parts of the castle where bombardment would not be able to reach at all. And there we go. This has been my review of the Caspian Castle. And uh, gee, like it was, it's, it's a really great castle, but yet there are some design elements that are just ridiculous. And I have no idea why they uh, put them there because, like, say, the crenellations, you know, properly sized crenellations, and then ones that aren't big enough. And they did it right in one area. So why didn't you do it right? That you know how, but they didn't do it right on all the parts of the castle. Very confusing. All the machiculations are completely fake. And then, you know, some of the gatehouses weren't as fortified nearly as much as they could have been. So there, there's flaws, un unacceptable flaws on this castle that could have been avoided. But still, there's a lot to love about it. And I hope you've enjoyed, guys. Thank you for watching. And until next time, farewell.